Now we've all been told that getting more oxygen into our cells is a really, really good thing. So many um, diseases occur because of this lack of oxygen, whether it's ischemia, hypoxia, whatever. Um, oxygen is a good thing. So today I'm going to reveal the secret of how to increase uh, available oxygen into your cells. And so you probably already know that sleeping with the window open is going to help increase oxygen. Maybe having more plants in your room are going to give you more oxygen. Okay. You also probably know that exercise will increase oxygen, specifically aerobic type exercise. That's the exercise that occurs maybe when you're walking or a slight jog. Being outside of nature will also give you more oxygen, right? Uh, I recently did a video and talked about methylene blue can give you more oxygen to the cells, which is pretty interesting. But there is a very interesting secret about oxygen that I'm going to share with you right now that you may or may not know about. In order to increase the available oxygen into the cells, the release of oxygen out of your blood cells, there is a trigger. There is this thing that controls it, and that is CO2. That's right, CO2. You see, you probably thought CO2 was a waste product and it's not needed, you know, as you're breathing out all the CO2. And by the way, when you're breathing out, an average person is probably breathing out, I don't know, maybe 25 to 75% oxygen. So it's not all CO2. You're breathing a lot of oxygen out too because it's not being absorbed. CO2 is the key for the releasing of O2. And it's called the Bohr effect, B-O-H-R effect. CO2 tells the body to release O2. And the way it works is that CO2 increases the acidity, makes things more acid, and then that loosens up the oxygen so it can then be released. Take a look at um, someone that is starving from oxygen, someone that is in a panic attack, right? What are they doing? They are hyperventilating. What happens when you hyperventilate is you're trying to get a lot of oxygen, right? But you're not getting a lot of CO2. What is the most common recommendation when someone is hyperventilating? Breathe in a paper bag. What does that do? That increases the CO2, allowing the oxygen then to go into the cells. So it might be a really good thing to actually buy an oximeter. You can usually get them as a kind of a pulse oximeter, checks your pulse rate and oxygen saturation. And normally it should be between 95 and 99. Okay. And we're looking at how much oxygen is saturated in your blood. And it's a pretty cool test and it'll kind of give you a reading of what's going on. And so in this video, I'm going to show you how to increase the oxygen and raise it up to 99 or even a hundred. And you can do this test on yourself. At first, when you think about it, it's very counterintuitive. Um, we're going to increase our CO2 to increase our oxygen. Sounds weird, but it really works. Now, a couple ways uh, that you can increase more CO2. Breathe through your nose versus breathing through your mouth. Yeah, that's right. Breathing through your nose gives you more oxygen. You would think when you're sleeping that it would restrict the air, which it does, and it would restrict the oxygen, but it doesn't. You'll have a much better sleep if you breathe through your nose. Now, this is not all about just increasing your CO2 100%. We need a balance of oxygen and CO2. Okay, all we're trying to do is balance it. When we're under stress, our breathing changes and we no longer balance the CO2 with the O2. We actually are getting more oxygen and not enough CO2 when we're under stress. And that's just probably counterintuitive when you think about it, but the solution is to increase more CO2. And you can do that by simple breathing as well, like slowing down your breath, okay? And balancing out the inhalation with the exhalation. There was one study, which I'll put down below, that they added more CO2 to this oxygen. And they gave this mixture of air to these group of people who all had hypoxia. So that's a condition where you have lack of oxygen, right? And they all increase their oxygen saturation, which is really interesting. So you have to prove this to yourself to see if it's true, but you will find it is true. But by increasing your CO2, uh, you can greatly help stress, anxiety disorders, panic attacks. You can decrease inflammation. 
You can resolve many times depression. You can increase your endurance with exercise. You can decrease symptoms of respiratory problems like COPD or weaknesses within the lungs from past injury. You'll even be able to hold your breath longer. So how do we do this? Well, the first thing you need to do is to do a test to determine something, to determine your carbon dioxide, CO2 tolerance, how well your body is able to tolerate CO2. And it's a very simple test, okay? And I recommend you do it laying down on your back on the floor, okay? Uh, all you need is uh, some type of uh, timing mechanism, some type of watch, and because you're going to just record the timing. So to do this, you're going to nose breathe, just only breathe through your nose. And you're just going to inhale and exhale three times with a timing of three seconds. So three seconds in, three seconds out, three seconds in, three seconds out, and just do that three times. Now, on the fourth time, you're going to expand your lungs and breathe in as much as you can. So that fourth inhalation is a very large um, inhalation. Now, as you time this next phase, you're going to be timing the slow, continuous exhalation of air from that inhalation. And so you're not going to want to hold your breath. You're not going to want to pause. You just want to slowly let the air out and you're going to time it, right? And see how long that takes, but it has to be slow and continuous. And so you're going to record the time until you run out of air. Okay, so now that you do that, okay, if it's 20 seconds or less, you're in poor condition as far as your respiratory system, your ability to tolerate CO2, your stress is probably pretty bad. You probably have a low tolerance to stress. You probably have anxiety. You probably can't exercise for a long time as well. You probably run out of gas. If you're between 20 seconds and 40 seconds, you're in the average group, okay? So not really great, not terrible, but right in the middle. If this exhalation is between 40 seconds and 60 seconds, you're above average, okay? Not really good, but you're definitely right in that intermediate area. You're definitely above average. Now, if that timing was between 60 and 80 seconds, you are considered advanced, okay? You have good stress tolerance. You have good endurance. You're in pretty good shape. You can handle stress pretty good. If you're over 80 seconds, you are in the category of elite, okay? This is like an elite athlete. Uh, you have excellent stress responses, excellent cardiovascular, great tolerance to CO2. So that is the goal, is to get you over 80. So what I want you to do right now is do this test and record your number in the comments down below, okay? I want to read the comments. I want to see results. I want to see where you're at. Now, the question is, how do we increase this tolerance to ultimately increase your ability to get oxygen in your cells? Because it's not just about oxygen. It's about the oxygen availability to the cells, which is dependent on the CO2. And again, we're just trying to balance the CO2 with the oxygen. So a couple things to do, okay? Start doing nose breathing. Keep your mouth shut when you sleep, right? And then even through the day, when you're driving, breathe through your nose. Another thing you can do is start breathing uh, with emphasis on your diaphragm, like just focusing on breathing in through your stomach, not through your chest, okay? And you're going to slowly breathe in, so you're pushing out your stomach, and then exhale slowly. So we're going to balance this. And I've talked about this technique to help you sleep as well. Start focusing on your sleep, making sure that your inhalation equals the exhalation. And that really helps you sleep. And now you know why, because it increases more oxygen, because it increases more CO2. And another thing you can do as a practice routine is do box breathing. It's called four, 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 and four. So you're basically just going to breathe in for four seconds. You're going to then hold your breath for four seconds, and then you're going to exhale for four seconds. And then you're going to hold this exhalation for four seconds. And you're just going to practice this, okay? Uh, longer and longer and longer to see if you can do it. So that is going to help you. So nose breathing, this box breathing, diaphragm breathing, and also holding your breath. 
Now, of course, uh, you probably want to do this uh, supervised. So that way, if you pass out, it's not a problem. But you can just do this on a low level. I don't recommend practicing this while you're driving. I can just see this now. Um, someone um, passes out and they crash and then they mention my name. Dr. Berg told me to hold my breath while I was driving. Uh, well, I'm telling you right now, don't do this while you're driving, okay? Now, there are several other things you can do to increase this CO2 tolerance. And I'm going to put a link down of a website that will give you a lot more information about this. But I just wanted to give you the concept, uh, some basic things that you can start doing. If you get an oximeter, now you can actually have some feedback and you can do your own testing on yourself to see what works. And then you can prove it to yourself. But anyway, there's some great information on this topic relating to panic attacks and asthma. And I, if you haven't seen my video on that, I put it up right here. Check it out.